These chapters are short, but intense. Kind of like... Vin, what were you thinking? We finally made it to the interludes, of which there will apparently be many if we get a couple after each day. And these ones are meaty. Before we dive in though, the schedule for Dragonsteel Nexus was just released! I'm supposed to be on a panel, but I don't know which one yet. I'll get to work on a video digging into all the different events. Redacted? Also, patrons! Big thanks to Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithi Caron, Gallant Aegis, and the son of James for their support. Interlude 1, Kalak. You know something big is going to happen when we get a viewpoint from a herald. Ishar is holding holding some of the darkness back? Manipulating connection is insanely powerful, which is concerning in someone powerfully insane. Referring to Kelsier as a herald from another world is interesting. Felt is an awakener! Makes sense that he would have loyalties to Thydekar given his home planet. This feels like something we should have seen coming. Also, Ashen had boa constrictors. That's fun. Ale, the Sion, is a spy. Again, it makes sense as it was originally given to Shallan by Mraze. We just underestimated the Ghostblood's capacity for conversion. Seems like she's bonded to Felt? He gets around. There's clearly some discord between Ayatil and Kelsier. Maybe she has has gone rogue. Either way, Shallan's definitely going to be racing Mraze to find Ba'ado Mishram. Somehow. Interlude 2, The Divided God. There's a double meaning in that. Usually, if an interlude is not titled simply the character's name, that means we'll be getting multiple from that POV. <sighs> Odium is in Tubela, right here. It's not doing well. There's a lot going on in this chapter. Deep into the philosophical underpinnings of the entire Cosmere. What makes a shard? Specifically, what makes Odium? Infinite capacity to see. Infinite capacity capacity to feel, infinite capacity for agony. We also see that Teravangian seems to still have both his boon and his curse from cultivation. He's a smarty, but he's also foundationally empathetic. It seems the original Odium was right to a degree. Passion or emotion may have been a better name for the Shard. This discussion feels very Mormony to me. One deity stressing the importance of agency, the other arguing for its removal in the name of peace. It's the Council of Heaven from the Pearl of Great Price. Interesting that Sanderson effectively humanizes Satan here. Taravangian sees that war and strife will continue until there is only one god, which is not foreboding at all. I still have a little hope that Todium is going to somehow be not the big bad and end up pulling off exactly what he means to, which probably means there's someone else out there gunning for ultimate power. Ambition? Mercy? Whimsy? Said in order of increasing terror? What are your thoughts on Odium? Or, for that matter, Discord? Join the discussion on my harmony and we'll read and find out. These are the jokes, people.